Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this place is unbelievable. It's just so beautiful. The city itself is beautiful, but this place is just unsurpassed. Um, you know, Joni Mitchell once said that beautiful music is liquid architecture. And about 200 years before that, Goethe said, the philosopher said, that grand and great architecture is frozen music. And I think we, be we have both here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Um, If you were to look at the root of your life and the way that your path moves, you really have two choices when it comes to what you hear. The first one is that you can just follow the path that is set in front of you and just step along granite rocks all the way. The other path that you can take, what they call the road less traveled, is the one where you hear remarkable things because you choose to. You choose to not stay with what people have given you in your own cultural context, but open your ears to the incredible sounds around the world. It's a little bit like embellishing your path with jewels, and every single jewel represents something different. The one is a jewel that heals, as music does. The other one is a jewel that allows you to express yourself, as music does. Another one still shows you how people communicate between each other. Another one reveals a culture in a way that you would never have known it before. In my own classes, the first thing I do when I meet a new class is I want to know who they are. And the best way to find out who they are is by seeing what they listen to. What do they know? What do they gravitate towards? What do they keep to themselves? And where do they stay? What's their little comfort zone? So I give them a quick little quiz, which usually freaks them out. It's usually about 20 very short samples, less than five seconds each. And I say to them, what is this? Tell me what this is. What, what does it make you think of? It's, for example, here's number one. I'm just going to play you three, but I'll give you an example. What is that? It's Beethoven. It's Beethoven's fifth, OK? Most people know Beethoven's fifth, and most people love Beethoven's fifth. The next one is this. I heard some saying, yes, it's, Va it's Wagner, right, of the Valkyrie, but a lot of people said it's the uh, soundtrack from Apocalypse Now, right? <laughs> and that's the reference point they have because it's what's been put in front of them. It's their common knowledge of popular culture. The next one is sometimes even funny. <laughs> It's the old spice ad, right? <laughs> it's actually Carmina Birana by Karl Orff, but it is astounding to me that people have these references and they have no idea who really wrote it, but they have found it in some popular culture and they still love it, which is absolutely fine. But I go through about 20 of these exercises and they usually, to be honest, get between two and five correct. And the reason is not because I only play things like classical music, but because people are in their comfort zones and they're either country people or rap people or rock people or classical people, but seldom do people venture out of their comfort zones. And to me, the big challenge is discover things that you've never heard of before. This is the wonderful thing about tonight, is that you hear things that you've never dreamt that your ears would have ever encountered. Um, my own background was very similarly insular. I came from a very classically oriented family, very accomplished cl classical musicians. Um, my father was the only church organ in the very small town, organist in, um, in the small town where I grew up in South Africa. And my mother was my first piano teacher. And my sister and I used to listen. My favorite moments were not the classical music that we used to practice or listen to, but with our nanny, Mickey, and you can see I'm on the left and my sister's in the middle, and that's Mickey, had this wonderful old gramophone record. For those of you over 21, you'll remember what that is. And we used to play this incredible music that just blew my mind. whistle music, or quela as it was called, which had a huge revival in late, in late apartheid South Africa. And what struck me at the time was, here I was in my insular little world, and she lived in the backyard, but she had wealth of music 
that was stashed in her record collection that I had access to, but really wasn't part of my world. And I realized more and more as I got older that there was also this other music that I'd never heard of. And in later part of South Africa, this music became more and more prominent and more accessible to the rest of us. Two things really struck me when I was in college. There were two pieces of music that completely transformed not only the way I listened to music, but in fact the direction of my life. The first one I'll play for you, and I want you to try and listen to what you can hear at the bottom of the African choir. <laughs> Anybody know? It's Beethoven's Ninth. Uh -huh. It's the theme from Beethoven's Ninth, Song of Joy, woven beneath the African Baraguanath choir. And when I heard that piece, I was completely in awe of that composition because I thought to myself, here we have two musics from two different cultures fused in such a beautiful way, and it works. Another thing I noticed was there was this wonderful nightclub in Johannesburg called Janus Jamison's, which was where sort of all the happening things were, were going on musically. And it was the first place where there were interracial um, venues for people to go and enjoy music. In fact, the government used to see that it could only possibly be a lunatic fringe that goes to places to listen to music. So as part of the lunatic fringe, we used to go and listen to these wonderful um, bands that would sing things that would be censored pretty soon afterwards because they often had lyrics that were anti-government in this later part of era. And one of my favorite songs was a piece called Weeping, by a group called Bright Blue, and while I was listening to it, if you hear quiet carefully, and a lot of people didn't hear it, a lot of people didn't, weren't meant to hear it, especially if they were the censors coming from the government, you'll hear the sound of the African national anthem, which was banned at the time, being wound along the bottom of the piece. And you weren't meant to hear that piece in public because it was banned, and I thought it was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever heard in my entire life. It became a very, very popular song um, after the end of apartheid when it was revived, but at the time you were not allowed to play it publicly, and it struck me just how unbelievably powerful music is. That in fact, there is so complicated, there are so many complicated um, complexities in music that there are ways to outwit the senses, and this is happening in the Arab Spring right now, where the way you use the melody, or the way you um, uh, harmonize, or the rhythms that you use, or the lyrics that, that you use, or the code switching between language, if you're quick enough, it gets distributed before the senses can get to you. And music is really the great equalizer because it gives everybody a voice. And now with technology the way it is, it's the great democratizer as well because every, everybody can spread their music as quickly as possible. I love this quote by Plato because it's basically saying that the government can't catch up if your music is quick enough. And music is quick and intelligent, so it really works very well. Um, just to end, I've been thinking a lot lately about the fact that most of our children get educated in history of wars. We learn history by the history of the world in wars, right? That's how we learn history. Who had a war when across the centuries? Imagine if children were educated by the history of music. It would show which countries communicated with each other, how people communicated within the country with each other, just like in South Africa where it was a, a medium of incredible communication. It was a mirror, it reflected who you are at the time. It was a mediator because it could speak between two people, it could speak across cultures and it could speak to the international world about a problem that might have been heard. And it was a mystic, it was a prophet. It prophesied how the world would move. It, it gave you ideologies of how you could envision the world that you really wanted it to be. So the other thing that's really important is the anthems of a country, that you, you sing the way you feel you want your country to be. I find it really interesting the other day, just to a little sh short story to end. Um, when I was a kid, we all knew the words of the national anthem, in Afrikaans and in English, which were the two official languages. We did not have a Pledge of Allegiance in South Africa, but we learned poetry, we recited poetry. In this country, everybody knows the Pledge of Allegiance, especially children, but not everybody knows the words of the national anthem. 
which is interesting to me. You know, you sometimes sing them at football matches and things like that, but not every child knows all the words. And the other day I was in my car and my three sons behind me started belting out this beautiful song and I thought, wow, that's so rousing and amazing, what is that? And I said, what is that? And they said, it's the national anthem. And I said, the national anthem? And they said, yes, it's the Bikini Bottom national anthem that Spongebob <laughs> plays. <laughs> and I thought, isn't that amazing that that's their reference point? But that's fine because they sing it together. So it's uh, <laughs> wonderful. So just in closing, I really think that we should look more at the, the, the expanding our musical vision and hearing. And instead of taking those little granite rocks and walking along what's been placed in front of you, to expand your hearing and see what's out there that you might never have listened to, to before because it may in fact change your life. And tonight is a good example to start because you've all heard things that you've never heard before. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.